figured I'd start out here, but I don't have to go out there. I could just zoom, right? Apparently. So um, I thought I needed to deadhead a lot of those, but apparently I don't. They look beautiful. I did deadhead a few last week, so they're getting pretty tall. They're like six, seven inches tall. I might go get a cutting and stick it in the uh, stick it in the pot on the other side and let it ride. I might do that right now. Hold on, I'm doing it right now. I lied. I'm gonna show y'all. I meant to show y'all my ginger too before. This will only be the second time I watered it since transplanting. But um, uh, I do see new growth. But it's it's very forgiving plant. I don't know about this seems to be normal i see it on a lot of people's ginger plant but i don't like it i wonder if it's a problem i know these these leaves can be used for a tea but i mean there's really not much to it they smell so beautiful and fresh and fragrant they lie they do not smell like ginger <laughs> so and to me, it's not worth ruining the uh, stature of the plant to make tea. Now, what I will do, if this gets too linky looking for me or too tall, what I think is too tall, because I don't think I want it to get over a foot long, long. Well, I don't care. It can get as tall as it wants to. But I guess in my mind, if it gets tall and linky, unable to hold itself up, I wouldn't want that. So I would just cut it down to where I knew the stalk could hold itself. And then I would make tea with what I cut off. Then I'd give it a shot just for the experience. Now also, Buddy. Let's go see Buddy. Blam. He's not happy at all. He's not happy at all. You know what I did? I said, oh, it's springtime. Everything's ready to flourish. Let me put him in some fresh nutrient soil. <laughs> okay. And... You know, give him a, a, some drink of fresh water and let him be great. Maybe he'll even pull out a flower bloom for us. And you know what he did? He turned yellow and just started giving up on life. He was like, fuck all this shit. Okay, now we go outside, which is awesome because I can be water and shit while I talk to y'all. Water. This is for those... For those of you who are new to my garden, this is Spider-Man. I did several things today. Um, this is my mint. This is the surviving mint. So, but my sweet mint, which is in the middle, it did it did uh, make it. It survived next to my OG mint, so maybe it'll give it a little more potency because the sweet mint is not very potent. And Mister, I was saying that Mister told me to. Uh, Stop leaving the screen open, and I see why. These little suckers, they're still alive. I guess they're at the end of their life cycle. But speaking of, this one of the other things I did. I just potted this, and it's really pretty pot. It matches the house and the furniture. Uh, I just found this little pop-up bush of violas that haven't flowered. So, I decided to put them in this pot. And I'm going to use that as a decor as a uh, centerpiece for the patio deck. And if I'm going to do that, and if it's going to be pretty, that means I'm going to need to get rid of those other starts. And Mr's going to have to put these in the garage somewhere. These are also moringas. So I'm going to assume that maybe they're having the same experience. And they're just waiting until the temperature gets hot for them to pop and thrive. This is that black cherry thing. That black cherry thing, though. Mm. She is strong. Uh, I feel like I'm going to love uh, like her better than the indigo rose. Mm. She just, ooh, she's strong. she's strong, she's strong. And she's able to, it looks like she's able to start in cooler weather. She she doesn't need heat to get started. She needs her heat and sun, but not to kick off like a lot of tomatoes do. She can actually get an early start. Uh, er, it, she appears to be able to get an earlier start than typical tomatoes. Um, 
here I have, I just planted my orange bell peppers in my cowlick bed. I have four of them, so I, paint, I found a spot for three of them. I'll show you that shortly, obviously. This is my pimento that came up. I wanted to grow a pimento this year because mm -hmm. I haven't in about four years, has it been? I don't know. My OGs know. But it's been a, several years, and uh, I never see pimento seeds, and I've never seen people, I never see people grow pimentos, and y'all know how I love to grow stuff that other people like growing. Hence my black tomatoes, girl. <laughs> So here's my patio tomato. She's not looking very uh, strong, is she? Mm -mm. But uh, that's what she's doing. And I wanted to wait until she, she got strong and healthy and repot her, but she's not doing such a thing. So I might repot her into a smaller planter with new soil. That might be what she needs. Uh, this is the my mother verbena this year. So she has all kind of little Stop, uh, little branches coming out on the sides because I've bred her so many times. This is my cilantro finally popping up. That's going to go up as soon as I can get my opal basils to come through. They're really taking their time this year. Really taking their time this year. All of the red vegetables are taking their time. I don't know what's up with that. Um, on this, I had this side, I had bok choy. You can see that's over there thriving, child. They didn't want to do nothing when it was cold outside. Cold is its season. When she, when they get done, I'm going to go ahead and take them to Mr. Share them with Mr. Family if I don't if I don't cook with them myself, which I just may. But let me show you. No, I'm not going to do it. Focus. So, I, I, like I said, I want to put that in my herb planter in the front. But I don't want this to be stronger than my opal basil and choke yeah my basil is going to be the primary center plant for that planter i may have to three fingers some more oregano because the last time i did it i let it stay in my pocket too long so it wasn't viable <laughs> but yeah oh here's a moringa that did make it it looks like it needs better conditions and soil so i'm going to take care of that i was supposed to do that right now but I didn't get to it because that's, that's the type of shit that happens. Now one of the things that I did was turn this, I'm going to show you the setup on the one side and you'll know it's the same way on the other side. I had my violas along the outsides up here but uh, I guess but the bunnies kept eating it so uh, I have now put onions there. I put onions all across there. I figured that was brilliant. What's going to eat my onions? And they're big onions too. They're not little uh, bunch of onions. And they're red because I like the sweetness of red onion. Okay, this is my cucumber bed. You guys know how that works. Still hasn't popped. It's warm enough though. Here's the uh, my uh, here's my, one of my starter beds. I put a couple of onions in there too. <sighs> These are tiny Tim tomatoes. This one did pop up. I put one here and one here. The one over here. Oh, maybe it'll make it. Okay. Yeah. So, um. Oh, did you see what I did? I just actually made a canal around it. Because I see that it's still in there. The stem is still in there. So, yeah, I thought it didn't make it. So I have this one, which is just popping. And this one, which I thought maybe hadn't make it, made it, but it did. So I have two tiny Tims on each side. I was gonna put an onion in there too, but I'm just gonna let the two tiny Tims be right in there. Right now, right here, I have my patio tomatoes. It is flowering healthily. So we're gonna let it be great. The green or the leaves are a little discolored here, but that's okay. I've lollipopped her. Uh, down here is a long, it's a really huge planter of spinach. Now, the reason why I made this huge planter of spinach is because I saw someone with a balcony garden. And in this balcony garden, they had hanging along the railings uh, a planter, much like this one. 
that just simply has one, two, three spinach plants in it. And if I, girl, that this this lady had the biggest spinach leaves I've ever seen. Like if we ever needed a green that was prolific and had huge leaves, it's spinach. It's spinach. Because them bad boys, they won't do nothing for us when it gets really, really hot. So let me add that. Prolific, huge leaves and would last throughout the whole growing season. Spinach is so good to be so freaking finicky. Oh, back there I have, uh, I have four of my red onions and two of my bunching onions. You can tell which two are the bunching onions because they are much thinner. This one and this one. That's the red onion. Lettuce. Uh, back here I have four. Well, you see those popsicle sticks are all. Uh, green beans. I'm doing that this year. I have these two tomatoes here. I don't know if they're patios or tiny tins. I do believe they're patios though. I just watered. I replanted more um, snow peas. They're usually my cool crop but they would not pop. They would not pop this year. Yeah. And of the, I put like one, two, three, four, five, six, six green beans along this fence, the inner, inner, inner side of the fence here, but who knows if they'll show up. Well, one of them showed up, that one. This is a black cherry, living her best life, girl. But now we're gonna go inside, cause he's little. Uh -uh. Cause Becky ain't gonna worry me now. Nah. 